Hey guys, yeah, I'm back. We're gonna throw up another vid. We have uh, some solar wind numbers went up around last night, one five twenty two UTC, and then they dropped down again. That's at about a half hour, and they dropped down again, and they went back up again for about a half hour at oh one hundred around that neighborhood on the 6th UTC so I'll let these play through I got this thing loaded up these three are synced and these two are synced I have these things to playing at 8 frames per second and there's they never sync up anyway but they this takes you all the way back to the 4th and there's a few places where there's a couple hours of missing time on these Fock radiation belts but on this one here we go 22 the there we go 22 we had a little surge here went up as high as 13 42 I think it was and then can watch 0, 100 1092 12 12 so then it, it would both events lasted around a half an hour or so with the high solar wind speed coming from nemesis inside our magnetopods because remember these solar wind speed numbers they're not coming from the ace or the Discover satellites, which sit out at the L1 Lagrange point, 930,000 miles in front of the Earth. They're coming, all this data is coming from these geosynchronous satellites that are in orbit that goes 13 and 14, and I believe 15's up there as well, providing all this space weather data. So I got these dialed back to only 5 frames, frames per second. Pulled up the full 300 frame run. So you get about 16 hours when you pull up the 300 frames if there's no real missing time it'll take you back 16 hours in real time so if you watch it and I used to run it at 8 frames per second for the last uh, several months at 5 you can see it a little better so I'm not going to bother stopping it and dragging this thing through but you can watch uh, what's going on here out front you got the big planet out here you can see its magnetic field lines trying to pop in from time to time here and there they are then they go building up in front of the planet on around the bow shock what did you see those little feely things coming out so we'll let it play through one more time and then I I've been doing some research trying to figure out well it started back when we had the power outage on December 27th in Queens and Kenner Louisiana and the density spiked way up in the uh, mid 50s and if I remember correctly I can't pull it up on ACE or discover anymore because it doesn't go back that far but the solar wind speed was also up. Remember I showed you how angry red those geospace things were? And this, we'll let this play through again. We'll go back to geospace. But we were getting heavy solar wind speed from uh, the sun at the time. And then we got that high density spike up around 54.35 atoms per cubic centimeter. centimeter and the normal is 4 to 6 atoms. But there was no CME from the sun. So what the heck? Why did that happen? And here's the latest geospace run. And if you remember back on the 27th, it was looking a lot angrier than this. It was looking pretty dark red all over. Now the solar wind speed's up quite a bit right now. It's up in the five, 550 range. And here's the density. And here's the pressure just to give you a little snapshot of what's going on right now. But here's what I was looking at. Okay, here's the uh, last seven days on uh, Discover. It looks like we had another, similar to what happened on the 27th, the density went up. I'm dragging it through here. Here's densities in the orange. 
And now if you remember, for the longest time we had a uh, earth to sun connection or sun to earth connection on the phi angle. Whenever it's 180, between 180 and 0, that indicates the connection stronger coming from the sun to the earth. And then uh, I've been postulating, and I think pretty well, firmly convinced myself anyway that uh, Nemesis being in the picture, whenever it goes above 180, that means this interplanetary magnetary field connection is predominantly with an object behind the Earth, which would be Nemesis, the solar body. So I think when that CME occurred, or that uh, power outage on the 27th, if you recall, the uh, I showed it you on a vid that the density went up to 54.35. I think that was the highest. And the BT and the BZ were all squirreled around and whacked out like this. And then I looked, so I was looking at, uh, and you can see that now pretty much on the 5th, we've reestablished a pretty strong connection with Nemesis again. But prior to that, here's what I'm thinking. Okay, this is the last seven days on Discover, right? So just picture Nemesis behind the Earth, the Earth, that big planet that crossed Ace on October 16th out in front of the Earth, and then the Sun way out here, and they're all four connected. So picture a big, huge wire or conduit, and they're all connected, and there's an electrical field running in between all four of these large objects, and there's probably more than four, judging from uh, MLSO. Here's the latest run from yesterday. It's like about a seven hour run. Got it on a loop. It's playing at 90 frames. Here's some of these large objects, one of which could be the one that passed Ace on the 16th. <coughs> and uh, so, anyway, they're all four connected, right? But the connection fluctuates as far as which, which one's stronger. So when the sun is exerting more strength on the earth or in this connection, that's when the connection is predominantly 180 or below. And when it's above 180, that means the connection is predominantly originating from Nemesis. So here's what I think happened, why this density spike went way up. Because on Enlil, I showed I can show you, they were nowhere predicted the density. They predicted the solar wind speed pretty good. But what I think happened was, okay, picture that big conduit. Nemesis, for we we're running pretty well, sun to earth, earth to sun connection with Nemesis trailing in there, here and there, you can see all these spikes above 180. And then when Nemesis electrical field started to get stronger, it started to push back this way, and wanted to reassert itself, make a connection with Earth, that's when this density spike started going up. Because it's like a picture of a pipe of water, or an electrical conduit, Whenever more density and 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 electrical <clears throat> strength starts coming from the backside on Nemesis, it causes uh, the uh, atoms to pile up. Solar wind density coming from the sun to pile up periodically, and this lasted about, like I said, twenty-eight hours. But the solar wind speed wasn't up. So that's the key. That's why we didn't have an overload. Plus, it didn't go up as high as, well, since the solar wind speed was up, that made the density push even higher. So when it happened on the 27th, Nemesis was pushing this way. The sun was pushing this way, and this density got all piled up, and then it finally released on the 27th. And that's when it came to Earth and caused those power grid overloads. <laughs> but this time, 
it only went up to 38 or something because the solar wind speed was down so that sun wasn't pushing as hard and therefore it didn't pile up as much and we didn't have the overload here on the earth so here's what it looks like if you pull up the solar ham space weather uh, tutorial this is showing you a CME back on 2013 March 16th that's what a CME looks like which is exactly what the data looks like now and you can read this stuff I don't have time to go through it all again but particularly pay attention to this uh, phi angle which I've been referencing hey here's Enlil oh crap so here's the Enlil solar wind prediction and this is what they put out they're pretty good on predicting the solar wind speed which is the radial velocity and I got it stopped here in the middle of the sixth a little bit past middle because we're a little bit past middle and they can see they got the solar wind speed up around 550 which is about correct but the density look they never had it above six there and I'm, I know they didn't have it high before so they're not predicting the uh, density pileups that I'm showing you on uh, Discover. Now here's Ace for the last 24 hours. Look at this gap. Freaking gaps up to 10 hours now from 2100 UTC yesterday on the 5th up to 0700 UTC here on the 6th. So I pulled up the ground tracking station plots. Here's the last 48 hours on Ace. I showed you before it was about 8 hour gap. Now it's grown to 10. So, uh, bigger that's the biggest I've seen it so it's got to be one of these planets doesn't have to be one of these but has to be I would say the big planet that passed ace on October 16th you gotta read my hypothesis number one <coughs> under the videos that I post in the comment section and pull up the uh, description box you can pull up this ace space weather tutorial here's the level on the Grange point so we got the nemesis back here earth we got the big planet somewhere out here we got ace and then we got the Sun so whenever this connection fluctuates between the two whichever more strength is coming from backside or front side of the earth every once in a while when they make a connection flip the phi angle flips and it has on the fifth now we're predominantly backside connected with nemesis the solar wind density piles up here around ace whenever that is in flux that connection switch is in flux you get what i mean so if you remember discover was catching some eight hour gaps earlier this week or late last week and now they're showing up on ace but 10 hour gap that's as high as i've seen it now there's like a little saddle area up here so these two satellites even though they're both at the l1 lagrange point they're kind of rotating around so i don't know the ground tracking stations a lot of them are the same so why it's not showing up on both is the only thing i can determine is that these two satellites they're not holding hands up there and they're probably uh, several maybe even a hundred thousand miles apart going around this little saddle area at the L1 Lagrange point I'll let this thing play through for you MLSO you can see these things are moving so this is a seven hour time lapse so the fact that they're moving and they pointed this out before they really weren't moving so much when I first identified these MLSO runs back when we had that big shutdown of all the solar observatories what was it in August September I forget exactly they weren't nearly this big these objects and they certainly weren't showing much movement so this tells me they're closer to the planet because they're bigger and they're moving oh well I'm running out of time God bless. Peace. I'm out.